Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. I love Half-Life. If I find out a friend has never played the Half-Life games, I will make them play Half-Life. I consider Half-Life as a franchise to be those games that's so important to gaming that you have to play it. Even if you're not into first-person shooters, even if this isn't your genre, you have to have at least experienced it. Something along the lines of, say, Metroid. Even if you're not into Metroidvanias, I feel like it's mandatory to play. At least once. And if I find a what friend hasn't played Half-Life, I will make them play Half-Life just to get them to experience what? the game I love so much. What? <laughs> I've played Half-Life so many times over the last 25 years that if any of my friends get stuck, they can explain the room they're in and I can tell them immediately where they need to go without me even seeing it. That's not really a brag. A lot of people could do this because a lot of people really like Half-Life. But I wanted to find another reason to talk about Half-Life. So in this video, we're going to be ranking the Half-Life chapters from the worst to the best. And I found this to be really hard because there's no truly bad chapter in Half-Life. There are some that are worse than the others, but as a whole, the game is remarkably polished, especially for coming out in 1998. I also have to do a balancing act between the chapter being good for a first time playthrough and to repeat playthroughs. I also have to balance between the game being good for the story pacing and the game being good for combat pacing. There's also a few chapters that kind of just don't fit the ranking at all. For example, the end credits is a chapter and I mean, that's just the end credits. Really good song though. There's also the hazard course, which fits in the universe, but it's just a tutorial, so I don't really think it fits this video. Similar thing could be said about Endgame. It's kind of just a final cutscene, so I don't know if it really fit this video, but I'm going to acknowledge that it does indeed exist. And in very last place, the worst chapter in all of Half-Life is not Zen. I find the worst chapter to be Residue Processing. I can put up with every other chapter in Half-Life 1 and really don't mind playing them, but Residue Processing is always a little annoying to me. This chapter is a bit of a slog and kind of just brings pacing to a complete stop. The game takes away all of your weapons again, has you do a bunch of different platforming and a bunch of different swimming parts, without really any combat. Now, not having combat wouldn't really be a problem if this chapter wasn't a bunch of awkward platforming in a map that's easy to get lost on a first time playthrough. I can blitz through this nowadays, but the first time you play through this game, or the first five times, you'll probably get lost around all of these conveyor belts, especially until you realize you need to go backwards up this double conveyor belt, which for some reason has mines in it. I think this mine is here to draw your attention that way, but then there's another one where you couldn't openly see it, so I don't know why it's there. Anyway, this chapter really isn't very good. And second to last place is still not not zen. It's on a rail. Yeah, this one is almost always going to be ranked low when it comes to people's favorite and least favorite chapters. There are some defenders of this chapter, but for the most part, people seem to not like it very much. This is effectively a prototype for Half-Life 2's vehicle sections, but in this case, the vehicle is on a rail, kind of awkward, and it makes movement really annoying. Whenever I play this chapter, I just ditch the rail car entirely and huff it. Yeah, the rail car really is the problem here because the rest of the chapter is actually pretty good. It would be classic Half-Life if this thing just didn't get in the way. All right, now we're finally in Zen, but still not on the Zen chapter, Interloper. Now this chapter is actually a bit hit or miss. I do find parts of it pretty fun. Like the first part where you have the Gargantua chasing you is actually pretty good. However, when I think of Interloper, the thing that comes to my mind is all the awkward vertical combat with those elevators that spin. Valve tried something here. It, it did not work. And finally, at 15th place, we have Zen. To be honest, I think people remember this chapter worse than it really is because the first thing you're introduced to when you load into Zen is platforming. You're telling me that you just gave me a long jump module and you put me into platforming that requires me to sit there and wait for slow platforms to eventually get over to me. There's so many other better ways they could have implemented and introduced this to you. But with that said, the Zen chapter is pretty short. It's basically just this island. And once you get to the ground, it's actually not bad. In fact, dare I say it's very memorable. You're put into this weird alien world and I've always loved that. I have that one part where you get to watch these glowy diamonds fly across the world and then you hear that glorious teleport sound. I don't know why this memory is so fond in my head, but I don't know. I really like this part. And from here on out is when ranking these chapters starts getting really, really hard. Half-Life is such a classic game that you're not really looking at deep valleys as much as you're looking at peaks and some of those peaks are even taller than others. One of these peaks may be Mount Hood, another one may be Mount Rainier, and then you got Mount 
Everest. But at 14th place, I have Office Complex. Office Complex is a fine chapter. It's very good. It's just kind of a continuation of the previous chapters and doesn't really introduce anything new. I remember that one battle with all the Vortigaunts, but other than that, it's kind of just continuing the tone that the previous chapters set. Which again, is not a problem when you're playing through Half-Life because that's what it's supposed to do, but for this ranking, it makes me put it a little lower than you might think. In 13th place, I have Lambda Core. Truthfully, Lambda Core is very hit or miss. There are some very solid battles here. There's also some funny, but meh, platforming. I enjoy this chapter, but I do think at this point is when Half-Life kind of starts to stretch itself out and drag on a little too long before Zen. Oh, and this chapter has that defense section that I will always skip with the Hive Hand because I don't find it fun. If you aren't aware, the bees from the Hive Hand count as a living entity, so you can skip the teleport section entirely and just go right away. In 12th place, it's Apprehension. Apprehension is an okay chapter propped up entirely by two encounters. The first one is where you get the crossbow and fight the demon fish for the first time. I love this part, it just stays in my brain. The second part is where you fight the assassins. These enemies are a bit polarizing. I personally like them, but I could see why people wouldn't. That said, the rest of this chapter is kind of just more Half-Life, which is always a good thing, but doesn't really stand out. In 11th place, we got Forget About Freeman. This really surprised me. I thought it would be way higher on the list, but actually looking at the chapters on their own, this is a very short continuation of surface tension. In a vacuum, it's a good chapter, but not a great chapter. It's got an okay fight with a tank and a fantastic fight between the aliens and the marines. In its defense, when people think of Half-Life, this is one of the first fights that pops into my head. But as a whole, Forget About Freeman is just good. At 10th place, I have Nihil. For actual fun factor, I kind of want to put this underneath Forget About Freeman, but it feels weird to put the final boss that low. The boss itself is definitely a mixed bag. The design of it is absolutely weird as hell, and that will definitely grab your attention. Fighting in the main room where you're boosting above the boss and shooting it in its stupid baby head is also pretty fun and okay. The part that's typically frustrating to people is the fact that this boss can teleport you away, which God, why? This tends to drag this boss battle out and this alone can make people really hate this boss. I got a fun fact for you though. Remember how I said the Hive Hand shoots a living entity? Well, you can shoot a bee into those portals and it'll make them disappear because it teleported a living entity. Alternatively, you can just hide behind the spikes. I think most people just do that. Regardless though, this is a decent final boss based off purely its weird factor. And speaking of weird factor, in ninth place, we have Gonarch's Lair. I know some people really don't like this boss, but that has always confused me. This thing is weird as fuck. It's a spider with a giant testicle. It's also kind of a multi-stage boss where once you do enough damage, it runs away. In general, I think this is just a solid boss. Like, I really don't have any complaints about this. I've always liked this boss. Here's where we get to a little bit of a gap. I think the rest of these chapters are some of the best moments in video game history. In 8th place, we have Black Mesa Inbound. This is the opening chapter where you're stuck in a tram just looking at things going around you. However, this is such a solid introduction to the Black Mesa facility that I really can't rank it any lower. Especially when you consider when this game came out. I know it's been said to death, but nobody did this before. This felt like a real breathing place. And as such, it's only fitting that 7th place goes to the chapter right right after it, Anomalous Materials. The moment you get out of the tram, it continues on that same concept. There's no guns, there's no fighting, you're just walking around at work. You get introduced to the normalcy of life before things fall apart, and the unforeseen consequences will live rent-free in my head. Yeah, that's sixth place. This is when Half-Life really starts to flirt with survival horror. This is the introduction to the world after the Resonance Cascade. The events of the entire franchise are because of what you just did. You can play this game now, 25 years later, and it's still incredibly immersive. Yeah, the graphics are obviously outdated, but that shouldn't pull you out of the moment. At fifth place, we have questionable ethics. So after residue processing, you finally start getting your weapons back, but now you're in a research lab and Black Mesa apparently already knew about all the aliens, and we're testing on them. You had been in this facility this whole time, but nothing looks like these labs. The map design for this chapter is incredibly solid. It loops in on itself. Your whole goal here is just to get a scientist that can open the front door. But that leads you around to a bunch of combat with marines and aliens. This will also give you the Tau Cannon. What kind of weapon? Put that down. It's a prototype. Man, it. Much too unpredictable. Don't let it overcharge. What, what do you mean, overcharge? <laughs> Very solid chapter all around. But a fourth place, we have Power Up. This is the first time you see a Gargantua. The introduction is the Gargantua just destroying some Marines. You could shoot it a bunch and kill it, 
but I think most people get the hint that you probably should just run. This leads you down into this facility so you can turn on the power and zap it to death. This is remarkably satisfying. The only reason it's not ranked higher is because it's basically just a reach out of the previous chapter. And third place, we've got hostiles. For the last few chapters, you had been hearing that the US military was coming to save you. But instead of being saviors, the moment you see one, they just start gunning down scientists. Now keep in mind, this is 1998, and storytelling really wasn't much of a thing in first person shooters before Half-Life. Even to my friends playing it for the first time today, this part still surprises them. Now imagine playing it back in 98. In second place, we have my personal favorite chapter in the game, Blast Pit. This is the chapter that Power Up was retreading. You're introduced to the tentacles, and it's made very clear that you should not mess with them. They can't see you, but they can hear you. So you gotta be quiet and sneak around it this entire time, setting up a way to finally kill it. Now, while shocking the hell out of the Gargantua was satisfying, it has nothing on this. But I concede, my favorite chapter is not the best chapter in Half-Life, that has to be surface tension. This chapter is absolutely nuts. It is jam-packed with so much combat and so much variety. You go from fighting on the dam, I could not show you a picture of it and you still see a picture of it in your head, to trying to skirt around a tentacle, to fighting on a cliffside, to shooting down a helicopter, to all-out combat encounters with marines that have tanks multiple times, to trying to avoid laser trip mines that will set off literal nukes, why does Black Mesa have nukes? To avoiding getting bombed in a pipe, and even that is enlisting everything that happens in this chapter. This chapter is huge. This is why I was surprised that Forget About Freeman wasn't ranked higher because in my brain, I kind of just tack it along with surface tension. But regardless, it is absolutely the Mount Everest of Half-Life 1 and maybe the entire franchise. This is an insanely good chapter. But there you go. I'm sure not all of you agree, and I'm interested to know what you guys like the most and dislike the most. Go ahead and put your own list in the comments if you really care to. Big thanks to my YouTube members. They got to see this video like three weeks ahead of time. I was stockpiling videos to take a break because I was going to be out of town for a bit. But you guys will be able to see my videos early if you become a YouTube member. But also just a huge thanks to everyone that watches. Dragon, we'll see you next time. <laughs>